Hi, I'm John Muir, uh, coordinator of undergraduate uh, communication skills at Dalhousie, and with me is Dr. John Evans. The um... <laughs> I keep getting this wrong. That's all right. Director of the communication skills program. Let's keep going. <laughs> um, uh, and we're here to talk about the first session of uh, the communication skills part of the clinical skills program. Um, so you've got some idea about what's coming up and. Uh, you know, some, some pointers for things that you may not have thought about or you may not realise to help you with things. The first session is introducing the students to the idea of the medical history and communication skills and the communication skills process as necessary. They will have had a plenary just before uh, the tutorials uh, and that plenary is going to introduce them to the Calgary Cambridge Guide, the um, patient-centred clinical methods, basically are models for the medical history, as well as an introduction to, to giving and receiving feedback, which is a fundamental part of our uh, teaching in the communication skills component and indeed in clinical skills. And we hope that this will serve as the model right through their clinical skills uh, course, Med 1 and Med 2. Um, in that session, so they've had a brief piece about Calgary, Cambridge, and we just want to say That's a few right. words about Calgary, Cambridge, and patient-centered clinical method, Joan, okay. uh, at this point. Okay, so what we're introducing to, to Calgary, Cambridge guide, as we mentioned, is one of our frameworks, which integrates the patient-centered clinical method. And the patient-centered clinical method is really a very much more um, exploratory way to work with a patient, to talk with a patient, to elicit information that is more than just the biomedical. So those questions that we've alluded to uh, in our first actual session of orientating you are the five questions. The questions that we would ask a patient about, you know, how are they feeling about something, what are their ideas, um, expectations, uh, and their function. So F-I-F-E, function and expectations of the visit. So those get integrated into the history and we've just very basically introduced students to those plus they have readings as well. So I'm thinking they're going to be coming to you with some knowledge about what these things are. Our learners also talk about Fife and that's one thing that they do take away from this curriculum and they've actually turned it into a verb and they talk about Fifing the patient now, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But the patient-centered interview then is uh, one that we are encouraging our learners to uh, master and not initially content. This is a, a session that talks about only the interview skills. How does one initiate an interview? How does one collect information? How does one you know, actually close an interview, summarize, develop rapport? The, the, the students at this stage may have absolutely no clinical medical knowledge. Some may. Some may have uh, healthcare backgrounds, uh, mm -hmm. nurses, physiotherapists, mm -hmm. all sorts of things. Uh, and so they may have, have a lot, lot of content knowledge. But the assumption is that they, should, they have no content knowledge. What we're trying to, to introduce is the process of how you conduct the interview. Exactly. And the process skills are the how-to. How does one ask questions to elicit information accurately, efficiently? So that's what we're really focused on. So this session then is not about content of the history, although, as we've alluded to, you know, most students can't go there anyway, but everybody knows enough to ask questions about, you know, if somebody comes with a headache, when did it start, you know, where is it? Um, but we don't want them to stay there. We want them to move into the more humanistic uh, things that you would want to find out about that person's life. How is it affecting them? What are they thinking about it? So the students will be coming to you in... Uh a tutorial group in the Tupper building uh, here after they've had the, the, their introductory plenary. Now this uh, session is only done once in the week so only the Thursday tutors are going to be involved in it not the Tuesday tutors. So for, for the, the tutors for this session you're going to be the tutors who would be dealing with things on Thursdays. You're going to get in this session, in this session only, uh, eight students rather than four students. You're going to get your own four students, but you're also going to get four students from otherwise the, the uh, Tuesday sessions. So you'll be in a group of eight, which is a bigger group than we usually use. But for this, it's that's okay because it works and it's uh, easier actually on the students because they're not quite so 
uh, there's more of them. They, they don't feel quite so threatened. And this yeah. is very new for them and makes a lot of anxiety on their, their part. Yeah. And it really is, this tutorial, which is in uh, two hours, is really designed to introduce the student to interviewing an SP. What does it feel like, look like? Um, and to help other learners understand their role as well. I mean, if you're the observer uh, in an interview, then your role is to attend to that uh, interview and be able to provide very descriptive feedback. And as we mentioned, we've covered what effective feedback mm -hmm. skills look like so that students know that they need to be descriptive and they need to be supportive as well. So your students are going to come to this tutorial at least with that information, not necessarily know how to implement it. That's going to take some time and practice. And the tutorial is sort of split into, into two parts. The first part is getting them ready, mm -hmm. um, going through some things with them. And the second part, there will be uh, an SP. In fact, there'll be an SP for half of that second part, and then a second SP will come in and, and take over for the second part of the second part. <laughs> uh, but the first bit is just getting them ready to do an interview. They've never done interviews before. This is the very first time. Uh, they are going to have to learn a lot of skills quite fast. One of the exercises that we ask you to do with them is to introduce, uh, to, to, to go away for a few minutes in pairs, each one ask the other about some information, and then the student who's received the information introduces the student who, who's given them the information. And that's a valuable exercise because they may never have done this before. They may never have thought about this, they may have had to take on board uh, the information and, and mm -hmm. store it and process it in such a way that they can deliver it back. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a useful tool to get them just used to the very start of, of all of this. Mm -hmm. It's a great time to do it because you've got eight students, they may never have met some of those other students before. So it's a perfect time for, for doing this. And ask your students to just do it in the room. So just to pair yep. off, uh, two to three minutes is all it takes. But the real learning opportunity here is it's difficult when you've interviewed somebody and you're hearing, you know, a little bit about their life, what's important to them, where they come from, and anything else that the other person chooses to disclose, and then to ask that student to report back to the group what their colleague just said to them. It, it helps them understand how difficult it can be to actually really be actively listening and then to be able to report back, which is what really the skill is that we're going to be teaching them throughout this entire curriculum. One of the other little exercises in this part of the tutorial that's very valuable to do is get them to, again, pair into students and get them to introduce themselves as they're going to introduce themselves to the first patient that they see. Mm -hmm. Because they have great problems often doing that. They, they, they can waste an awful lot of time later. So it's worth them thinking about it, or at least certainly discussing it around with them as to what mm -hmm. they should say, mm -hmm. how they should do this. Yeah. And the question that often arises here is do they introduce themselves by their first name? Uh, first name, last name, uh, but they do need to also include their role as a Med 1 student. And the other part of the introduction is um, how they acknowledge the patient and uh, whether they shake the hand. And the danger, of course, is assuming that you can talk to the patient by calling them by their first name. So these are things that uh, need some kind of discussion because this is an entirely new experience for many of our learners, if not most of them. This may take up a the, the most part of your, your first yeah. hour, you may want to give yeah. them a little more information about introducing yeah. themselves, doing the uh, uh, their introduction, summarising some questions, and how they end the interview as well. Mm -hmm. After this piece, the SP is going to arrive, and we're going to ask that one of the students uh, volunteers to interview uh, the SP in front of the group. Uh, when they've done that, we'll then ask for feedback. Now, the feedback follows a very specific pattern here. This is feedback with a group of students. It's different from feedback with just two students. It's feedback with a group of students where the first person giving feedback on the performance should be the student interviewer. The person who's just done it, how do you feel that went? What went well? What are the things you, you had problems with? Let's have some feedback. Mm -hmm. The second piece will be to the standardized patient. You know, how did you feel about that interview? Did you feel that was, was appropriate? Well, you know, what are the things you liked? disliked, all the rest, and then open it to the rest of the students after that the patient has given feedback. And that's because there's now enough information to, to, to discuss these, these things. Your own feedback as the uh, facilitator should 
come right at the very end, although often you're going to find that you're going to be able to draw out things that you want to say as you're facilitating the discussion from the students, mm -hmm. because they're going to bring up a lot of the issues. But there may be issues that don't get brought up at all by the other students, and then those should come later from you. Yeah, and the real temptation here as an expert is to offer a lot of your feedback early and to dominate the conversation. And it's really difficult not to when you know your stuff. So, but what we're going to ask you to do is kind of sit back as much as you can to encourage the learners to offer feedback and work with their comments uh, as much as possible uh, before you have an opportunity to share a lot of your own insights. The cases that the SPs are going to present are going to be very, very simple. Mm -hmm. There is some more depth there. If, if, a, if a student is doing particularly well, there's all sorts of things the SP can come out with, and, and so they've got depth. But what we're expecting is something very simple. The student may not get very far into the interview before uh, uh, getting into problems, and we tell all students they're welcome to time out, stop the interview, we can discuss it. We can discuss where we are, we can go back into the interview after, after the mm -hmm. discussion. Another student may want to take over at this point. That's all right as well. The student may feel, no, I, I don't want to continue with this. And then one of the other students may, may well want to volunteer and continue with it. The one thing is that these, there are going to be two SPs and they're going to switch around at some stage. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the, the SPs are ready to switch at the end of... Usually you, you have your first half hour of discussion, half hour. then you get your uh, first SP for half an hour. And then when Don't the change. other SP is ready to come, they're going to knock on the door. So here's the challenge about keeping an eye on the clock. Because when the SP knocks on the door, and if you're not ready, then you're going to hold up another group because they're waiting for your SP as well. So please keep your interviews to about a half an hour with your interview and your discussion so that your SP is ready to leave the room at the half an hour mark and you get a fresh into, you get into a fresh interview. And you may well find that the first student to volunteer is a student with a healthcare background mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. feel a little more comfortable about mm -hmm. doing it. So often they do have more knowledge than you might expect, but mm -hmm. uh, we really are not expecting a lot from this. This is a trial to see what's happening so you can discuss mm -hmm. things, so you can guide the students. Mm -hmm. So next week, when they come and, and do the interview uh, themselves, they don't feel maybe quite as strange and upset mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. So again, we've introduced them to the process, and we've actually introduced you to the process as well, so that you can get a feel for the kind of work that we do in the uh, communication skills component. And uh, you'll have a half an hour after the uh, actor leaves, your second actor, to you know just talk about how it went, and, and this is what we do, and um, this is what we're focusing on, so that, as John said, that your learners are more comfortable, because the first learning resource uh, activity that happens the next week can be stressful. Okay? So. so thank you, and we'll be speaking to you again shortly. Thank you.